Hey there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, Qualcomm launched the Snapdragon 865 at the beginning of December, and actually just after that, they allowed us to play with what's known as the Qualcomm reference device, the QRD, with the Snapdragon 865 inside of it and do some performance testing. And we're now allowed to report those testing results. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Qualcomm reference device is basically a pretty bland, ordinary looking smartphone that Qualcomm put together, but to actually demonstrate the internals, which in this case would be the Snapdragon 865 with the uh, X55 modem and the RAM and the storage and so on. And really it's typical of what you'll find in actual production 865 devices. Of course, bigger companies like you know Samsung or so on will design their own motherboards and whatever, but this is basically a reference on how the Snapdragon 865 will be inside of a smartphone. And uh, while my colleagues from Android Authority were at uh, the Snapdragon Summit, they were able to play with the uh, Qualcomm reference device and they were able to record Speedtest GX on the device. Now, Speedtest GX is the version of Speedtest G that compares it against the iPhone. So what I've done is I've got together a Speedtest G video and I've published that now, it's available now, over on the Speedtest G channel. Now, if you want to watch that and actually see the result for yourself, then pause this video go to the link wherever it appears up here, it's probably also in the, in the description, go and watch that and then come back here. If you don't want to watch it, but you want to hear about some of the results, then I'll tell you now, but I'll just wait a second while you go and watch that. Did you watch it? Great, okay, so you know the results, so let's just dive into those. The first thing we've got to say is that using Speedtest GX, the Snapdragon 865's CPU that is faster than the CPU in the Apple A13. So what we saw there was that the typical A13 would do the CPU part of that test in 40 seconds. Now a Snapdragon 855 in comparison would be around 45 seconds, whereas the Snapdragon 865 was able to do it in 36.6 seconds. So a clear win on the CPU side by the Snapdragon 865. And of course, as you saw there in the overall test run, the Apple won just by a, a smidgen, a tiny smidgen, by the time you take into account the GPU and the other factors. But we can see now that the Snapdragon 865 is up there competing neck and neck with the iPhone. So this is really is a huge leap forward. Now, why has this happened? Well, for two reasons. The first of all is that the speed difference between the uh, Apple A12 processor and the A13 processor was not as great as Apple led us to believe. In Speedtest G, you'll see it's only a few seconds difference between uh, the two iPhones. And again, I've got videos for that, which you can link to. So really there wasn't this kind of 10, 15, 20% speed increase that we're used to seeing. I reckon it was more like 5%. So a bit of a stumble there by Apple. At the same time, the Snapdragon 865 was able, with the Cortex A77, was able to leap forward and bring some great CPU performance. And of course, the Adreno 650 always performing well as a GPU. So it was able to leap forward and then catch up to the uh, Apple. Now, if you want to look at other benchmarks, if you don't believe only what you see from Speedtest G, but you should, of course. But if you don't, let's look at Geekbench and Antutu. Starting with Geekbench, this is Geekbench version 5. So don't compare these two version 4 scores that you may have seen for other Snapdragon 855 devices. This is version 5, they're not comparable. Now, the uh, for the single core, the Snapdragon 865 on the Qualcomm reference device scores around 932, 935, something like that. Whereas an iPhone, you'll be getting around 1,330, 333. So that shows you that a single core running on its own is still more powerful in the uh, A13, in the Apple processor, and Apple are very good good at getting single core performance out of their devices. Now that shows us that obviously there's still some way to go, but when we look at the multi-score uh, tests, then the story changes ever so slightly. The Snapdragon 865 will score around 3,450. An iPhone 11, according to my testing, will score around 3,480. So a tiny bit difference there. Uh, of course, with Geekbench and Tutu, the, the scores do tend to kind of do this. I, uh, Speedtest G is much more kind of regular, but they tend to do this. So I've seen some 
different scores around there, but 3,450, 3,480, very, very close. That shows that the Snapdragon was quite a long way behind if you look at previous generations, and now in one go, it's come up and it's literally fighting neck and neck with the uh, iPhone. So this is a great achievement for the Snapdragon 865. And when we get to Antutu, we see a favorable picture for the Snapdragon 865. This is Antutu 8. You can't compare the scores with Antutu 7. So the Antutu 8 scores for the Snapdragon 865 in the Qualcomm reference device is around 540,000. The iPhone 11 uh, Pro Max will be around 506,000. So 540,000 compared to 506,000. So a significant jump there again for the Qualcomm 865. So overall, what we're seeing here then is that Speedtest G is showing that the CPU is better in the uh, 865 beating the A13. However, overall, the A13, the iPhone 11, was able to beat the Qualcomm reference device by just a smidgen of a uh, fraction of a second there. When you get to Geekbench, better single core performance still in the A13. However, overall, using multi-core testing, then the two are neck and neck. And Antutu is showing us that the Qualcomm reference device was actually faster than the iPhone 11 uh, Pro Max. Now, what's really interesting is, is that the Qualcomm reference device tends to be a little bit slower than the devices we actually get out in the market. So what Samsung, Sony, LG, Xiaomi, uh, Lenovo, and all the others produce next year based on the 865 tend to be just a little bit faster. So it's gonna be really interesting when we see actual consumer devices coming out in early 2020 and right through to the Google Pixel 5, if uh, Google launch one uh, at the end of next year, we really are gonna see some interesting battles now between the, the iPhone and the uh, 865 device. And I really look forward to testing those devices over on the Speed Test G channel. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the Speed Test G channel that I just mentioned over there. It's also got a Twitter account, Speed Test Underbar G. Don't forget I'm launching a newsletter. Please go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address there, and you can sign yourself up to my newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.